Right, deep breath. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be looking at 10 celebrity friends turned bitter enemies. Did you pack the cases yourself? Yes, we did. Unfortunately, we didn't receive any help from the Seven Dwarves. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at close celebrity friends and partners who dramatically stopped working together. Let us know in the comments which feud you think is the most intense. Gary Barlow and Robbie Williams Just have a little patience. Though they were arguably Britain's biggest boy band in the 1990s, Take That spectacularly broke up after just six years in the spotlight. Feeling your frustration. Though they've reconvened many times, the current lineup is usually Gary Barlow, Howard Donald, and Mark Owen. Though Jason Orange and Robbie Williams will show their faces every once in a while. But Barlow and Williams had a very public feud after Williams blamed his former bandmate for his leaving the band. Williams made all kinds of comments about Take That being talentless, though eventually the two patched things up. For years though, the tabloids were full of these two disagreeing over absolutely everything. Have a little patience. Mel B and Jerry Halliwell Another 90s power group, the Spice Girls also had a member infamously depart. In 1998, Ginger Spice quit, and though they continued for two more years, they were just never the same without all five members. Really, really, really zig -a -zig -a. But in 2019, issues seemed to resurface when Mel B claimed in an interview with Piers Morgan that she and Halliwell, now Jerry Horner, had a lesbian twist back in the Spice Girls' heyday. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. Jerry's never said much about this, though she did once admit to having a same-sex affair that put her off women for life, and according to anonymous sources, wasn't happy with Mel spilling these details, whether they're true or not. If you wanna be my lover. Sharon Osborne and Simon Cowell in 2017, mainstay of British and American pop culture Sharon Osborne was conspicuously dropped from the next series of The X Factor. When we flew yeah, you over, miss you miss your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite fabulous. You missed your pants. <laughs> she came and went from X Factor a handful of times over the years, but eventually left for good, though supposedly not by choice. We're miserable and we ain't doing that. <laughs> She's claimed in the tabloids that she was actually contracted to do the next series of The X Factor, but Simon Cowell changed his mind, wanting to get rid of her because she was too old, in her words. She's gone on to attack Cowell publicly many times, saying things YouTube won't let us repeat here. Do you think he needs a reality check? I think you do, actually. <laughs> I bloody think you do, and yeah. I think I'm going to give it to you right ah! now. Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry Looks good, doesn't it? Mm. I would have liked to see more colour on the pineapple. People were up in arms when Bake Off moved to Channel 4 in 2017, with Mel Giedroyd, Sue Perkins and Mary Berry all leaving the show. They were replaced at the time by Noel Fielding, Sandy Toxvig and Prue Leith, but perhaps Berry left the show for some other reasons. It's baked, but it's wet. Yeah. The texture of the frangipan, it's a little as though it's curdled slightly. Mm. Paul Hollywood, the only original star to remain, has said that Berry once hit him with her handbag and that she was livid with him for the way he apparently treated his ex-wife, whom Berry was also friends with. And then he went on the record to make fun of her lifestyle, implying that she lives in an enormous gated mansion. Slight soggy bottom there. You put, I think, the grated rind of about four limes in there, didn't you? Yes. Very, very limey. Matt Lucas 
and David Walliams. Where are you flying to today? Disneyland! For much of the 2000s, Lucas and Walliams ruled British comedy, making hit shows like Little Britain and Come Fly With Me. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses behind the scenes. For a while, they could put on a public show of unity, but would be tearing lumps out of each other backstage. We both love Disney, don't we, Jeff? That's all right. We've actually bought a personal DVD player with us so we can watch the Aristocats on the fly. Eventually, tensions got too high, and they dramatically stopped working together in 2011. Lucas has since rebranded himself as a wholesome all-round entertainer, while Williams has gotten himself into a few unpleasant scandals, including the one that cost him his job on Britain's Got Talent. It's a great film, The Aristocats. I shouldn't really like it because I am actually allergic to cats. Yeah, she comes out in a rash. But luckily these are cartoon cats, so they never come out the screen. However, years on, and they've supposedly got some new projects in the works. Kim Woodburn and Aggie McKenzie. One sweep in the car. Oh! Oh my god, oh no! It looks like Kim Woodburn is feuding with everybody she's ever met, let alone her former co-star Aggie McKenzie. They were also popular in the 2000s, presenting How Clean Is Your House, in which they toured the UK and shamed members of the public for their filthy lifestyles. This lady, she ain't no cleaner. She can't be that bad, surely, can it? Yes, 28 years worth. 28 years? Oh, oh my, my god. god. But the solid partnership turned sour in 2007 when the two got into a huge fight while both working on a pantomime down in Brighton. Oh, who does he think he is? Well, Kim, I think we've got to rise to the bait, haven't See we? See all the muck in that kitchen. Oh, Did you see it? Can't complete it. Come on! It's still not clear exactly what happened, but Aggie has said publicly that Kim crossed a line and refused to apologise. They still worked together for a few more years, but eventually things got too strained and they've not spoken in over a decade. I can't believe somebody watches that television just write filth there. Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy. It all started with a social media post back in October 2019, which quickly went viral. Believe it or not, these litigious wags were actually once good friends. Wives of footballers Wayne Rooney and Jamie Vardy, Colleen and Rebecca's falling out was so extreme, it went all the way to court. It was about Rooney accusing Vardy of leaking her private Instagram posts to The Sun, as things she'd said on there kept showing up in the tabloids. She said she planted these fake stories on her personal Instagram account and altered the privacy settings to make them visible to just her one suspect, Rebecca Vardy. Vardy then took Rooney to court for defamation, and it all got even messier when the judge ruled in Colleen's favour, meaning Vardy lost an estimated £3 million. We doubt they'll ever reconcile after that. The internet quickly christened Rooney Wagatha Christie in a nod to the world-famous British crime novelist Agatha Christie. <clears throat> the Beatles. The Fab Four were certainly close friends at the beginning of their career, but it wasn't easy being the Beatles for ten years. As the egos of each member grew and rifts sprang up primarily between Lennon, McCarthy and Harrison, although Ringo Starr also quit at one point, eventually a dispute over the band's legal team caused an irreparable rupture. From August 1969, all four Beatles never performed together again, and things always remained difficult between them. They did briefly work together on the Beatles anthology following Lennon's death, but they didn't make another album, and the dissolution of the band led to various court cases. James Corden and Matthew Horne. I don't know. All I'm saying is there's some graffiti on a toilet brush in the men's cubicle at the Rose and Crown, which I reckon is aimed at me. What's it say? Smithy was here. After their starring roles in Gavin and Stacey, as Gavin and his best friend Smithy, Corden and Horn continued to work together in British comedy. They made a sketch show together, and then the very poorly received film Lesbian Vampire Killers, but afterwards didn't work together for years. You punched a child. He was spraying me in the balls with my own seltzer bottle. What was I supposed to do? Not hit him is what you were supposed to do. It wasn't until the Gavin and Stacey Christmas special in 2019 that Corden and Horn were reunited. 
It's still not exactly clear what happened, though Horn declined to talk about his former friend on Piers Morgan's life stories and later blamed Morgan for stalking the feud rumours. This is a nightmare of epic proportions. What's wrong with her? A. How old is it? B. Have you seen the tattoo? And three, look at the size of it. Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby. Firstly, are you OK? I hope so. It feels very strange indeed sitting here without Phil. One of 2023's biggest news stories, this bizarre falling out had been rumoured for months. After the Q-Gate debacle, it began to circulate that Schofield and Willoughby had fallen out behind the scenes of this morning. This eventually got so intense that Schofield dramatically quit the show. You, me and all of us at This Morning gave our love and support to someone who was not telling the truth. Then came the shock reveal that he'd had an affair with a 20-year-old ITV runner to whom he'd given a leg up into telly. Who acted in a way that they themselves felt that they had to resign from ITV and step down from a career that they loved. Willoughby said in a public statement that she was as shocked as everybody else and that Scorff had been lying to her. Which begs the question, what did they fall out about before, if it wasn't this? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.